Hello and welcome to Bevy Basics. In this episode, we'll be covering events, starting with the concept overview of what events are and how you would use them in your game. An implementation that Bevy takes for adding events to its engine. The use cases for events specifically in Bevy and some practical examples of where you would use events. Timestamps for each of these sections are currently displayed on the screen and can be found linked in the description. In the ECS architecture, it is sometimes necessary to do a one directional transfer of information from one system to multiple other systems. It is not necessary for the other systems to exist, but it's useful when the other systems know to search for information in one unified location for a specific type of activity that they are trying to pr present. In this diagram, this is represented by using a resource where the resource is first sent to the first system and then resent back to the ECS world for then future systems to use. In a well-architected ECS system, this can be abstracted away into an event. Events are basically the same as resources, except that they allow for a system to request a sender and then for other systems to receive the events and consume them without the need for you to implement a system to, of your own to track what events have and have not been consumed by a system. This allows for parallelization of systems that only require writers. This allows for optimization in that multiple systems can write events at the same time if implemented correctly, though this could result in unexpected behavior as events will arrive as an unordered list. An engine could also implement an ordering system that is updated each event call, allowing events to have a deterministic ordering when arriving in future systems. Depending on how the engine chooses to implement events, they may only persist for a single frame, multiple frames, or it could be possible that the engine could track whether an event has been consumed by a system yet and only clear events when they have been consumed by at least one system or all systems flagged there for consumption. Bevy uses a double buffering system, allowing for events to persist between two update calls. This results in no events being missed as long as your system is called once every update, whether that be every frame or every X frames, depending on how the events update function is implemented. Bevy does this by using two vectors, which results in it being important for you to make sure that there is an update system for your event that is called. Otherwise, memory usage will grow indefinitely as the events are never cleared, even if they've been completely consumed by every system. Bevy also implements an add events system to its application struct, allowing for you to implement any event of a generic type. This allows for any data type to be used as an event, including enums to allow for one system to consume multiple types of an event without needing a separate event reader or writer. Using Bevy's built-in dot add event method will result in Bevy inserting a resource of type events with the generic parameter provided, along with an update system that will swap the buffer every frame. This results in Bevy's generic behavior of events needing to be consumed on every frame or potentially missed. If a system does not consume events every frame, then there's a potential chance of missing events sent in the previous frames. It is also possible to insert your own events resource, as seen here, by calling init resource with events and then your generic type. But be careful when doing so, because you will need to also implement your own update system. So you will have to add either one of these types of systems provided below. On the left, I have an event update system that simply takes the events and updates them every frame. This will result in the buffer swapping every frame and giving you the generic behavior provided by Bevy. On the right, I have an update that uses a local boolean to keep track of if it was updated. This results in update only being called every second frame, allowing for the buffer to be twice as long. This could be implemented in any method provided, as we'll show in the examples, to be extended to any number of frames or maybe a fixed time step like once every second. Once you have an event in your application, sending events is done by including event writer in the system's parameters. You can call the dot send method and then provide whatever type the event is. This will result in the event being added to the queue to be consumed by event readers in the future. 
to consume events. You can simply provide an event reader with the generic event type provided in your system parameter. And then you can iterate over all the events in that reader. Each system keeps an instantiated version of the event reader, meaning that events consumed in one system will not be consumed in another, allowing for multiple systems to use the same event and provide different behavior. This is done by storing a lightweight pointer into the events resource as buffers. This allows for expensive events to still be used without having the expensive overhead of having to copy and store multiple copies of the same event because it is just being pointed to in a localized location. This does result in the bevy's behavior of losing events if you do not read them before the update is called a second time because the buffer will be cleared and the event will be lost. In this example, I have a, an event configurable update that allows you to specify the number of frames that, be, that Bevy will wait before updating the event buffer config paradigm. This function takes in a generic T of the type that the event will be and then a parameter, the number of frames to wait between updating. In this example, the events are cleared every second of real time. This is done by taking in the events resource, the time resource, and keeping track of when the last update was. I then add the delta time to the last time, and if that is greater than one, I clear the events and reset back to a with a modulo of one. This does result in it being possible to have two adjacent frames do an update if one frame took a significantly long term to process and then the next frame happened to push the modulo over one again. Provided here is an example of a pop-up system where we have a pop-up struct, which is the event that is provided, where we supply a title, a icon, and the message to be displayed in the pop-up. There is then a system with an event writer that checks for the user's input and, and then sends a pop-up event with the corresponding title, icon, and message. I have a system that consumes these events and will spawn a pop-up on screen. I have not actually created a spawn pop-up function because that is beyond the scope of this video, but it would simply be something that instantiates a, an entity with the corresponding components and the information provided by the pop-up. To do so, it is as simple as iterating over all pop-ups in the event reader that have not been consumed yet, and then calling a corresponding function internally. This is an example from the game that I've been developing. In this function, I use the player's position and the position of all the chunks to determine if the chunk is within the player's view distance. In this for loop, I go through each chunk, checking to see if it is in range. If it is not in range, I send a despawn chunk event and then also despawn the chunk from the world. In the map update function, update the stored physical data of the map to tell the system that the map chunk is now possibly to be unloaded from memory. In this spawn event, it will check to see if it currently has the chunk that is trying to spawn loaded into memory, or if the physical chunk will exist on disk at some point. It then spawns the chunk into the world. On the despawn event, it will remove the chunk from the loaded chunk's hash map, allowing it to indicate that that chunk has been despawned and can be removed from memory if at some point I implement a function that cleans up memory, such as the hash map getting too long. There will be a poll linked in the description of what you want me to cover next. I believe I have covered all the absolute primitive basics in Bevy, and I will now be moving on to more Bevy-specific structs, such as the input system and the window settings and things like the time resource and other, and other default plugins that are provided by Bevy. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you have enjoyed events in Bevy. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. I'm really close to hitting 300 subscribers, which is... Hopefully, videos will be more consistent, but uh, apparently life has a way of deciding that I'm not allowed to be more consistent with my videos. I thought I would be more consistent when I have time now, but I instead managed to catch COVID, and then by the time I got over COVID, I had a stage show that I, have to go, I had to go and run. So hopefully I will be able to make a few more videos uh, over the next week before having to continue with the stage show. And if not after the stage show is finished, hopefully videos will become more consistent. 
But again, thank you for, for sticking around to the end of the video and I hope you did enjoy 